Welcome to your EMG video manual. For demonstration purposes, we'll be using this rifle right here, model number on screen. While this rifle may not look exactly like your product, the internal components and disassembly procedures are shared. If this is your first airsoft gun and you're unfamiliar with AEGs, make sure that you watch our AEG basics video. That'll help you get the basics down and be safe. This video is more about the specifics and quirks and the ins and outs of your particular AEG. Always make sure that you're wearing eye protection when working on your airsoft guns. There are springs and sharp parts that can damage your eyes. So just be careful and make sure you're working in a safe environment. Also make sure that your battery is disconnected from your AEG and that nobody's around that could get hurt just in case there is a negligent discharge. So first let's start with the controls of your officially Colt licensed EMG M4. The safety is right here, and if you're right-handed, you operate it with your right thumb. And it can go from safe to semi-automatic to fully automatic and back to safe just like that. Note that it is not ambidextrous. The trigger, of course, is located right there. The magazine release is this button right here. And you'll usually, if you're right-handed, just push that with your index finger to release the magazine. And to access the hop up on your rifle, you pull back on the charging handle right here. This little lock or latch on the left side needs to be depressed. Pull it back and that will reveal your hop up right in here in this window. And you notice that that, is, that mock bolt pulls back when you pull on the charging handle. To release the mock bolt, there is a bolt release right here. You just push on the top of that paddle click, you hear the click, and it will go forward, just like that. If your rifle came with backup iron sights, they can flip up and down, both front and rear, and those can be adjusted for height and windage. The front post has a small little detent that you'll need a tool to push down, and then you can rotate this post, either clockwise or counterclockwise, to raise it or lower it. The rear sight can be adjusted by uh, for windage by turning this knob right here. That'll move it left and right. And then this collar, if you twist it, moves this aperture up and down, up and down this way. The stock on this model is adjustable, which means that you can depress this lever right here and adjust the length of the stock to your preference. Some models will have a non-adjustable stock. When it comes to batteries, these guns are rear wired, which means the battery is held in the stock or buffer tube. On rifles that are wired to the rear, there will usually be a way to remove the cap on the rear. There will either be a door or you can pull the entire butt plate off via pinching these tabs and removing it. And that will give you access to the battery compartment where your wires will be held. Alternatively, if you have a removable stock, you can usually pull down on the adjustment lever and that will allow you to remove the stock entirely from the buffer tube. And that will also give you access to your battery compartment. Uh, some stocks will have additional battery storage capabilities along the sides of the buffer tube. This one is a little bit snug. Uh, you could get a very thin battery and fit it down in there, but most of these guns, you'll just uh, get a buffer tube style of battery. When you do get a battery, you wanna make sure that it is wired to Dean's or Airsoft T-plug, that is the connector that comes standard on the EMG Colt M4s. These licensed EMG Colt M4s will have a stock or buffer tube that is held to the body by a screw. And that screw can be accessed with a Phillips or cross style screwdriver. Uh, you just gotta make sure that it's long enough to reach down the buffer tube. Once you have undone that screw, you can slide it off of the connector. And there should be just enough room in there to slide that connector by, but if you can't, you might have to shake out that washer and screw that's holding it in place. Then you can take the buffer tube or stock off. After you take off the stock or buffer tube, there will be a spacer and sometimes this spacer will have sling loops on it. That should come off. 
and that will allow your wires to move out of the way of your quick change spring. So if you wanted to change the FPS on your rifle, all you're going to need is a flathead or probably an Allen key. Just take a look at the back side of that gearbox right there. And by pushing in and turning 90 degrees, it will release the spring guide by allowing those tabs to find the keyway and allow you to pull out your spring. This is a very convenient way to change your FPS and go from outdoor field velocities to indoor field velocities. And all you have to do is remove your stock or buffer tube. Now we're gonna put that back together. There we go. On some models of M4, the back of the receiver and the buffer tube guide will not have a keyway to allow for the spring guide to be removed without first taking the gearbox out of the lower receiver. And we're gonna show you how to do that now. Consequently, this is also how you would access your inner barrel and hop up if you ever wanted to change to a different inner barrel or hop up bucking, or if you just needed to clean things or if you just needed to give things a thorough cleaning. The first thing we're gonna do is punch out this pin right here. If it's stiff, you might need to coax it. And then you can have to get that pin punched all the way to one side. It is captive, so it's not going to go anywhere. Then what you need to do is make sure that your dust cover is closed. And we're going to slide this upper receiver off of the lower receiver. You see the seam right here. So I'm just grabbing and pushing with my thumb. You can see that it starts to move, but it gets caught and it's getting caught back here on the charging handle. So you push the charging handle out just a little bit and up. And then you can start sliding it. Oh, but we got caught in the dust cover. Got to make sure that stays closed. And sometimes it can help to push on the uh, bolt release right there. And then you can see it starts to come out, but the charging handle is going to get caught on this little nub or ridge on top of the gearbox. So just slowly ease those apart. And then you can pull the charging handle up and off of that ridge right there as it comes back just like that and there we go so there's a little ridge i was talking about now the charging handle can come forward and then this can slide free just like that so here you have your lower receiver with the gearbox and the upper receiver is what contains your hop up and inner barrel let's take a look at that right now so this is your hop up and inner barrel Depending on which model you got, it might be a little bit longer or shorter, but they're all going to look more or less the same. Of course, this is your adjustment wheel right here to apply more or less hop or backspin to the BB. In order to access the bucking on your inner barrel, there is a locking collar right here that you're going to want to pry away either using your fingernail or a very fine tool. This is just a plastic collar and you can gently there we go. And of course, mine just went flying across the room. You want to make sure that you don't do that. So there we go. I got it. It's a bit of a tight fit. So set that aside and make sure your hop up is all the way off. And then you can very gently give the barrel. You notice I'm rotating it slightly in my fingers and you're going to want to make sure you keep the hop up turned upside down. Whoop. <laughs> you're going to want to make sure you keep the hop up turned upside down while you remove the barrel so that you don't lose the nub spacer. And there's your bucking. Set that down very carefully. And the bucking can just be pulled right off the end of the barrel. And you can change that part out if you so, if you so like. And just pay attention to how it goes back together. There's a little ridge that goes inside of this groove. And then put it all back together. And then there's also this brass collar right here, and that is just to help keep the barrel centered in relation to the hop up. So it's a stabilization ring essentially. And then this spring right here is what keeps this whole unit pressed back, this, this end right here, pressed back against the face of the gearbox. And this is what interfaces with the magazine. So I'm gonna put that back in the upper receiver, done with that for right now. And we're gonna set that aside. And now we're going to cover how to remove the gearbox out of the lower receiver of your licensed Colt EMG M4. 
Uh, the first part is taking the stock off, which we have already done. Now, in the event that you need to change the spring and you cannot access it through the back of the receiver, then you're going to need to remove the gearbox out of the lower receiver, and I'm going to show you how to do that now. So the first thing I like to do when taking a gearbox out of a lower is to take the motor out of the pistol grip. While we're down here looking at the bottom of the pistol grip, you'll notice that there are three screws. Uh, these two hold on the motor plate, which keeps the motor inside the pistol grip, and this center screw is what adjusts what's called motor height. That either pushes your motor further into engagement with your gearbox or lets it sit further away from the gearbox. If your motor is sounding whiny or grindy, that is definitely something to check is motor height adjustment. It could be that the screw has backed out just a little bit and the teeth of the motor aren't engaging with the gears. So you can try tightening that a little bit uh, just to see if it fixes your problem or if it's too tight and too screechy, you might wanna back it out so that it's not as stressed. I'll show you what that looks like as soon as we get these screws out. All right, so you take the motor plate off and now you're looking at the bottom of your motor. Now, of course, while you're working on this, you definitely don't wanna have a battery plugged in. So on the bottom of the motor, you will have one wire that is tagged red, that's your positive line, and then one wire tagged black going to the negative line. And with a tool, or if you can just reach in there and pull those off of the spade connectors on the bottom of the motor. They should just come right off. Now these spade connectors sometimes can fall free of the connections on the motor. So if you go to pull the trigger and there's absolutely no response, even though you have a perfectly good battery plugged in, your motor connections are one thing that you're gonna wanna check. So take the motor plate off the bottom of the pistol grip like I just showed you and check to make sure that these connections are nice and secure. If these motor connections fall off really, really easy, what you can do is Take a set of pliers and very, very carefully, I cannot stress this enough, very carefully kind of try to pinch those closed just so that they grip the spade connector on the motor a little bit more securely. Uh, do this at your own risk, of course. If you damage your spade connectors, uh, obviously that's gonna void your warranty. After you have disconnected your spade connectors, that motor should just pull right out and it'll show it to you right there. So this is the gear, it's called a pinion gear, on the top of your motor, and that's what engages with the bevel gear inside of the gearbox. You notice that has a spring on here, and that is what keeps the motor, it pushes the motor this way, and then you have the screw on the bottom of the pistol grip pushing it this way. So if you loosen that screw, this spring pushes the motor down and away from the gearbox, and if you tighten the screw, it pushes it up into the gearbox. So finding that sweet spot is important to uh, a well-performing AEG. Again, that's called motor height adjustment. All right, we're gonna set the motor far away now. It is magnetic, of course, so. And then there's gonna be two more screws holding your pistol grip onto the gearbox, and I'm gonna take those off right now. All right, and then you just pull it off the wires, just like that, and uh, I, you just wanna make sure that you don't lose the screws inside the, the pistol grip, so. And it's gonna be kind of tricky to get back in place, so I, I like to try to leave them in the pistol grip and I just gently set that down. All right, so there is your pistol grip and motor disconnected from your gearbox. Once again, that's where the motor sticks in and engages with the bevel gear, uh, just for illustrative purposes. The next thing we need to do to take this gearbox out of this lower receiver is to disconnect the mock bolt release. That's this guy right here. And it pivots on a pin, and we're gonna push that pin out using a small punch or a fine tool, just like that. It should come out relatively easily. There is the small pin that it pivots around. Make sure you don't lose that. And then, because this, if you look in here, it crosses in front of the gearbox, just right there. Because it crosses in front of the gearbox, we need to take this out, it engages with this right here, you see that moving? And well, mine just fell right out. Sometimes you need to depress this little uh, catch in order to take this lever out. You can see it's got a little arm on the one side and that's what engages with it. Uh, leave the lever in place and put this with the pin just like that. Now that that's out of the way, we can move on to the magazine catch which has a hex key. 
Thankfully, almost every single airsoft gun on the planet uses metric. All right, and once you use that hex key to take off that button, there's then a spring, and then the magazine catch should fall out the other side, just like that. Okay, one step closer. Just a couple more things holding this gearbox in place, and those would be body pins. We've got this rear body pin right here, and then this, what's sometimes called the trigger pin, is actually a flora pin, technically, and these both are preventing the gearbox from being removed. Now, it's very important that this pin, this center pin right here, only be removed in the correct direction. So if you just take a very close look at it, you'll notice that one side is smooth all the way around the circumference, and the other side has these little tiny ridges. These little tiny ridges are what grip the shell of the lower receiver and keep the pin from falling all the way through the other way, keep it in place. So you're going to want to push it out of this side. So that means that you go to the opposite side. You push on the side that is smooth. And sometimes you need a little tap, just like that. And you'll notice that the pin has started to come out and you can usually just pull it the rest of the way out. And again, if you take a look at that pin, you'll see that one side is rough and the other side is smooth. Remember which side it came out of, because if you try to punch it all the way through, you can make this pin very loose and then it'll just fall right out and uh, you can run into some alignment problems. So there's your flora pin. And now lastly is this rear body pin. And so, since you have everything else out and it's the only thing holding it in place, it should be relatively easy to punch out. If it's not though, this one's a bit stiff. Again, use the appropriate, appropriately sized punch and give it a few taps. You see it started to come out. This one is also captive and now my gearbox is moving rather freely inside of my lower receiver, but you'll notice it doesn't just straight pull out. So that can be due to a couple of things. It could be like uh, th this fitment back here could be pretty tight. Um, also, it could be that this selector lever and cam is fitting very snugly, and sometimes you need to move the selector lever to about midway between safe and semi to allow the gearbox to come up and out, and there we go and then everything just pulls free from the lower receiver. There you go. So there's your lower receiver with the captive pins. We can set that aside, and now we're taking a look at the gearbox itself. So of course, from here, you can remove the spring guide, and you can probably just do this with your finger by pushing in and rotating. But of course, tools are always easier. So push in, rotate, and you're going to want to be careful when you do that. Because just like that, if you don't have a firm grip on it, you can uh, hit yourself in the face. So always wear eye protection when you're working on your airsoft guns. So once again, there's the spring. All right, so now that you've got your gun all the way apart, it might be a little bit confusing to get everything back together. So let's go ahead and go through that process. Uh, first and foremost, let's get that spring back in there. All right, and once you've got your spring back inside, then you're going to want to put your gearbox back into the lower receiver. And uh, you're going to want to make sure that this rear body pin is pulled out. And put that selector lever about halfway between semi and safe. The rear wires go down through this hole right here, and the Motor wires, of course, go down through this hole right here. And uh, getting all those wires to cooperate can be a little tricky sometimes, but there you go. All right. And then uh, next, I look for the trigger going through that designated hole right there. There it is. There's the trigger. You can see the trigger poking through. And then this cutout right here in the selector plate needs to fit onto the cam of the selector lever, and it did. 
And there we go. Everything sits nice and easy. And then you can push on the rear body pin and get that in there and maybe use a plastic handled screwdriver to tap that back in. There we go. All right, next we're gonna put the flora pin back in. It's important to remember which way you took it out. I remember that the knurled side for me, the textured side came out of the right side of the lower receiver. So I'm gonna get that in. And then uh, getting this to fit properly can take a little bit of wiggling of the gearbox. And then you'll see once it's aligned, it, it did just fall almost 100% in there on its own. So, and then you can just give the other side another little check, of course, holding it in place, make sure it's nice and centered. And then you use a plastic handled screwdriver to tap it into place. You can also use, of course, a non-marring mallet. There we go, nice and flush. Now that that is secure, we can go ahead and put our magazine catch back in. So this part that, so this long part of the magazine catch goes in this side, obviously. Hold that in place, put the spring in. And then, oh, I'm gonna switch hands here. And then the little button with the screw, I like to get that centered and then, uh, got one finger right here on the other part of the catch and one finger right here kind of holding the screw in place find my allen key there we go all right now let's get that uh, mock bolt release back in place so you're going to feed it in from this side and you can look on the inside and see it crossing there in front of the gearbox and you might have to depress the latch right here in order to get these to interface. And then of course you can hold it in place and make sure that pushing on it makes that move. Awesome. Take the little pin that you took out earlier. Remember which way it came out. Put it in from that same side and presto, back in business. Now, if you're ever afraid of losing this pin, a touch of blue Loctite on just the very end of this pin, uh, pr probably on this side, or, or even this side, just putting a little bit of Loctite right there can help it hold in place. And then it's blue Loctite, you can always take it off. All right, let's put the motor grip and motor back in. All right, so these two motor wires are going to go through those two medium size holes. You have the one big hole, the two medium size holes, and a bunch of small holes that go into the medium size holes. And uh, if it's wired up correctly, the positive wire goes through the front hole right there, this one, and the negative wire goes through the back one. So again, because I kept, because I kept those screws in there from last time, I'm gonna kind of do this with it oriented vertically. That way I don't accidentally knock those screws out because like, as I said, they can be kind of a pain to get back into the proper holes. There we go. All right, I got those wires going in there. Nice. And I just settle those in and, all right. And then you use a screwdriver to tighten down those screws there. And then you just get them finger tight. If you over tighten any of these screws that can strip and uh, that's bad news, you don't wanna do that. Okay, let's get the motor in there. So this is important. Uh, these wires can look like they're gonna get in the way of the motor. Uh, what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that they stay out of the way by kind of routing them around the outside of the grip and then they come straight up the back. A little bit of experimentation can help out. And then, uh, also remember which way the uh, motor came out of the pistol grip. I remember that the red terminal, the positive, was toward the front of the gun. So once these wires are out of the way, uh, just make sure that, that spring is there. If that spring is not there, you will have issues, to say the least. And then very carefully feed that right back in there. And it should just fall into place. And then to check to make sure it's good, you just push on the motor. And if it's springy, and it's not catching on anything, that's perfect, that's excellent. Okay, and then from here, this could be a little tricky also, but you should be able to get the spade connectors back on the spades of the motor. 
I usually put the negative one on and then the positive. Okay, and I know that those are in place and they feel secure enough. I don't think like, I don't feel like they're gonna just fall off. All right, and then once you have those, take your motor plate and uh, you can take the screws out. There we go, I got those two screws right there. Take your motor plate and just make sure you're not pinching any of the wires. Put it over the center. The screw right here, of course, goes right over the center of the motor. You just put that right on there. Make sure you're not pinching any of the wires and push it down flush. And I should just be able to hold this down nice and easy uh, and it should be nice and flush and that way you know that you're not pinching any wires, nothing getting on the way. All right, then you can just drop those screws into place and use your screwdriver to tighten those down. All right, now let's get the buffer tube back on. So before you get your buffer tube on, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that, uh, of course, your spring guide is nice and secure. And then uh, this is a inline MOSFET. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that that doesn't get damaged or pinched in any way. And we're gonna also wanna make sure that our wires uh, don't get pinched or anything like that. So we're gonna take our spacer and the part that has the, the uh, raised portion is going to notch into the back of the receiver here. So feed that over the wires, down and over the end of that receiver, that lower receiver, there we go. And just make sure that your wires are sitting pretty and not getting pinched, awesome. And now, take your buffer tube and feed that over the wires. There we go. And then you should have your screw with the washer and you should be able to just drop that right down the buffer tube. Okay, give it a little shake and then you're gonna to wanna to look down that buffer tube and make sure that everything is sitting flush. And then this part can be a little bit tricky, take a little bit of practice and time but you're gonna to wanna to carefully get your screwdriver engaged with the screw and probably hold this straight up and down, get the screwdriver engaged with the screw. I'm gonna do that right now. And, uh, and then you're gonna to have to feel for that engagement with the back of the lower receiver. It's actually threading into the spring guide. And you don't wanna cross thread anything or get anything all jank. And sometimes you can even pull it away and watch the screw engage with the buffer tube or with the uh, spring guide. But once you're practiced, you can usually just feel it out. Okay, and I can feel that engaging nicely. You're gonna wanna tighten that down nice and secure. And you're gonna wanna also make sure that your castle nut, this guy is secure. Uh, one trick you can use to get that tight if you don't have a wrench is you can unscrew that, that screw that's holding the buffer tube in place, unthread it a little bit, turn this just enough so that it's a little bit proud of the buffer tube, and then tighten down on the screw. There we go, and now that castle nut is nice and secure. Okay, now that, that is all nice and secure, you can, of course, Put your stock back in place. Again, if you have a fixed stock, this is gonna be a little bit different, but still gonna have screws and the same kind of process. Uh, if you have an adjustable stock, you just open that lever like that and get it over the buffer tube. Check, make sure it doesn't just pop off. Awesome. Get the back part of your butt plate. There we go, nice. All right, last bit. We're gonna, pick, we're gonna put these two back together and this can be sometimes the most tricky part of reassembly because it, it can have a very, very tight fit. First thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that this front pin is out of the way. There we go, and that front pin is captive so it's not gonna go anywhere but you just wanna make sure that it's totally out of the way. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your dust cover keeps closed, so keeping a finger on it can help. 
And then you're going to want to make sure of a couple of things. One is that your hop-up and inner barrel are centered and springy, perfect. Then you're going to want to check to make sure that the mock bolt, which is this part right here, you can kind of see that moving. Yeah, that's just a, a thin piece of metal that looks like a bolt and it slides over the top of the gearbox right here and it's what reveals your hop-up. You're going to want to make sure that this is sitting nice and flush, as flush as it can be inside of this upper receiver here because if it's kind of janky and you try to smash it back together, you can bend that and ruin it and you're just gonna have a bad time. So make sure that this is sitting as nice as it can in there. And we're gonna move delicately and there's gonna be a few bits where we might have to push a little bit, but again, just take it slow. So you're gonna start by indexing the gearbox with the upper receiver. Give it a little wiggle and it should slide forward. You might have to push on the bottom of this, uh, this part right here, bolt release. Okay, I like to hold it upside down and just make sure that that, and just make sure that this is not uh, out and sitting to one side that it fits nicely right in between those two lower tabs. Okay, once we get to about this point, once you get to about this point, you're going to need to pull back on the charging handle and fit it over that notch. This part can be tricky. And it might feel like you need three hands. And if your mock bolt, if your mock bolt is not sitting totally flush, it'll get caught on the front of the gearbox right in there. So I just reached in here with my finger and I pushed down on that mock bolt and I slid it around the front of the gearbox and now it's sliding forward. And then you work, there we go, you work that charging handle by lifting it up and away just a bit over that notch and then you should be able to, again making sure that this pins all the way out and that the dust cover is closed, push it forward and there you can see the hop up is nice and aligned. And ah, there we go, a nice flush fit right there on the back, a nice flush fit here on the front, okay? And pull it forward and push this bolt in, or push this pin in. And uh, you're, you're gonna see that this pin is kind of D-shaped, that flat portion needs to be in line with the part of the lower receiver right there. And uh, again, it might require a bit of coaxing. Again, with either a plastic part of a screwdriver or a non-marring ha hammer or mallet. And there you go. It's all back together. And then you just check it for function. You can pull back on the charging handle. That locks back, yep. And it goes forward just fine, nice. All right, guys, that does it for your disassembly guide for your official Colt licensed AEG by ENG. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to us. Uh, links are in the description, or you can go through our website, evic.com. We are more than happy to help. Just remember to be safe and be responsible. Take it easy.